Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, golly, if you've been beekeeping for more than five minutes, you're gonna realize when you go to the hives and you're cleaning shit up, and you get the blooming honey and the stuff in the roof of your box and down the wall, and you get the broken frame, if you're like me, because you're a bit slack and you haven't replaced your frames. It's probably because I'm a little bit further down the track. But anyway, if you've got nice new frames, keep on keeping on putting new ones in there because it's a pain in the ass. To date, I would just normally tip me blooming wax upside down or me scrapings onto a bit of a strainer and let it drip through into another bucket and then figure out what I'm doing after that. But I got all excited the other day and bought myself a little honey crusher to see if that would speed things up. The things that happen when websites give you free postage, you just can't help yourself and you just buy stuff. But anyway, we're gonna give it a crack and we thought we'd see whether it works. I think it said on the directions, some assembly required. So we've got our little stands put together. You missed that bit because the cameraman was trying to get the ears to work. We'll pop our pot on there. Oh, with the tap out the front. I like our high high tech tap. I reckon that's a bit dodgy ass, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Poor thing. No expense spared here. 27 and 18. I wonder what that means. Anyway, doesn't matter. So we've got a we've got a little flatty off bit of metal. And in the bottom of the thing, we've got this cage that the honey can go in. And a little stand at the bottom. Of course, you can buy these in all sorts of different sizes. I just thought this would be a good start of experimental version. I reckon if you really got excited and you rummaged around in your uncle's shed, if he's a great winemaker at home, you'd probably find his old wine press and you could stick your honeycomb in that. But don't tell him I said that was a good idea. Anyway, we're gonna pop some honeycomb in here and we'll give it a bit of a squeeze. I think we'll have to put our turnbuckle in after we put the honeycomb in the pot. Because otherwise I can't see how you get it in there unless you're real keen. Oh, this will try out me muscles. Right, somewhere in the bottom of here is a fair bit of honey, but we've got honey that's sort of still stuck in our honeycomb. So we're gonna pop a bit in the pot and we're gonna give it a squeeze and see how we get on. Right, so let's pop some of this in. This is a stuff that's already leaked down a bit. So I'm guessing the theory is you pop it in the pot and you give it a squeeze and then you get all your honey out like that. Cause that. Hopefully it's quicker than doing one at a time like that. I'm just wondering whether we crush this little bit of stuff and then tip it out before we tip the bottom of the bucket in because most of the honey settled into the bucket already and this is sort of drained off fairly well. Anyway, I don't know. You and me are finding out how this crusher thing works together. We'll find out together. But I reckon we'll give this a little bit of a squeeze before we tip the rest in because otherwise We'll probably end up rolling over the top of the blooming little pot here. Anyway, so we might just go and rinse my hands off before I get honey and crap all over my own handle. I can't get in the house because the blooming door is shut, so we'll have to go out into the rainwater tank. Mm. Yeah, I'm assuming we just pop that flat bit on the top. Pop this in here. Rawr. So we'll just start off with our screw wheel. So we've got to get our bolts organized. And we've got our little screw machine. Ooh, golly gosh. I don't think this is top quality material, but it'll be all right. It'll be a good experiment. Put little bolts in there like that. I don't know. I reckon we'll just leave them finger tight for a start. Because I think we're going to have to take it off and on. I can't figure out how else you'd get it in there. I don't think any honey's going to come out this little bit. <laughs> We're just going to scrush this bit up and then we're going to tip it out. Is that right? I reckon what's in here is going to end up as a candle, I think. <laughs> oh, golly gosh. Talking about candles and wax. The wife's got so motivated, she's even helping me clean up the frames. So she's been out here the last weekend cutting frames off. But the only problem is she's created a job for me now. I've got to clean the jolly things. But that might be another episode, so you just... Come along and just one thing at a time, the cameraman says. Don't get ahead of yourself. Anyway, I reckon that's just scrunched up enough and don't think nothing actually came out. So I think we've just got flat wax. So, so far, I would say that was an epic fail. I didn't think there was gonna be much in that, but I didn't know. I thought we'd better 
We'd better at least crush it. Needs little fins on there so I can fan myself as well. Well, radio sports fans, we'll have a look what happened. I don't think much happened in there. <laughs> oh, man, now I've got my thing stuck. Oh, I'm supposed to pull out of there. I'm gonna get the whole thing. Oh, I think it's stuck. We've got two drops of money and a, and a problem. Oh, John, bloody hell. I'm not sure. Did you bring a bee scraping thing in here? Ah, just wait there, everybody. A hive tool for all occasions. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I don't know. When do we get three drops of honey on the bench? <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly gosh. It's just as well the wife's not home to catch me, isn't it? Oh, don't traipse honey through my house. I did tell her, though, the other day. I was watching this guy and he was doing blooming, actually talking, no, wasn't watching the bloke at all. So I was talking to a mate of mine that bought an extractor off of this old guy and he had it bolted in his wife's laundry, like bloody bolted to the floor of the laundry and I'm thinking, honey, I'm a champion. <laughs> I never bolted shit to your floor in your laundry. I steal all your screwdrivers and all your spare shit, but I've never actually done that. I never bolted the extractor in your laundry. So oh, I think that makes me a champion. Maybe a second class champion, but anyway, I thought I was a, oh, I thought, my God. Yes, you go. Anyway, I did think, could you imagine my wife coming home and there I am in the bloody laundry after I've bloody dined and bolted and extracted to her floor and there'd be honey and shit going everywhere. She's a patient woman, but I think that might be the end of my beekeeping career. It would make a very interesting last YouTube video as my head went that way and my legs went that way. <laughs> so I reckon we're down to where the most of the honey ended up draining to, so... I don't know, I think I'm just going to tip the thing in there and see what happens. Come along for the journey. Oh, God! That's heavy. Oh, no! <laughs> Shit! I think my bucket was too big. Oh, don't do this in your wife's kitchen! Shit! <laughs> Fucking hell! Ah, man! <laughs> it was a little bit, but anyway, the bucket's too big. A small bucket would be good. Oh, man, where's your blooming helping hand when you need one? No, what's he got? Instead of giving me a helping hand to rescue me, he's just recording my inaccuracy. Ah, shit! Don't do that! <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Okay, I don't know. Shit! <laughs> Goodness gracious, I don't think. I think you want to buy a bigger one, son. Oh, hell. <laughs> I think we need a bit bigger one. Maybe this is meant for if you have one beehive, not bloody 50 or 100 or whatever we did the other day. Oh, golly. I don't think this is going to work too flash. I wonder if this thing had a money back guarantee. Oh, blooming hell. Anyway, I'm going to go and get a cloth and a bucket of water. Before I go too much further, because this has made an awful mess. Otherwise, you open a door handle with that and it'll be sticky for months. Nah. I'm just going to wipe up some of my honey disaster, because I know what happens. This stuff gets tracked from here to there to everywhere. Oh, anyway, it tastes good, the little bit I've licked off my fingers. Bef I licked, washed my hands after I licked my fingers. I was watching this chef dude and he licked the blooming spoon and then stuck it back in the soup on telly and I thought, ooh, that could not be good. That might get a little bit awkward. My chef, when I was doing that, if you licked your blooming spoon and got anywhere near the pot, you were in trouble. Which is fair enough too. Who knows what horrible diseases you might have. I think I did pretty good, really. I got most of it in the pot, considering. <laughs> See, that's not as big a mess as you thought. I've got a little bit of got a little bit of stray stuff here. Although well, that's not too bad. Some of that might have been there before. Right, let's turn the wheel, shall we? Put the thing that turns on the top, or the screw wheel, or I wonder what the technical name for that would be. I reckon if you were watching one of those instruction videos, or or there was, you know, when you read the directions, this would be called the compression rod, I reckon, or the 
I don't know, what else would you call it? <laughs> Maybe it could be called the intense threader. Nah, I reckon compression rod sounds good. Or tension rod. Or anyway, we're gonna twist it and see what happens. I'm going down, down, down. Oh, it's coming up. It's sort of working. My old, my old man's a dustman. He wears a dustman's hat. He wears corbelimy trousers and we live in a council flat. He works all day and drinks all night. And I don't know what else the song says, but anyway. <laughs> oh, help. I think I'm going to put this down lower when we're not filming. It's like... I got short man syndrome. Actually, this is a good idea. Six foot four over here. He could bloody turn the thing. I'll hold the camera. Right, we're ready to go. We're squeezing over the top. I think we meant to have the tap open. There's been some conjecture here about opening the tap. Some certain members of the team think the honey is going to go that way. I think it's going to go down, but we're going to hold the bucket up just in case. Then we'll satisfy every problem. <laughs> Are we ready? Here goes for the tap. Somebody who invented gravity said honey goes down. Who was that bloke that, who found out about gravity? Newton. Was that Newton? Newton the gravity man. Oh, that's right, because he was on an apple tree, wasn't he? He got hit on the head by an apple. Golly gosh, just as well he wasn't a beekeeper. If a bloody bee box fell on his head, he'd know about gravity. He'd probably be dead. Oh, I think this is stage one. Then we'll dip it in another bucket and we'll run it through a sieve. Get rid of all this little bit of shrapnel. And then, I reckon we're going to have some yummy blue gum honey out of the top of a bee box. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Maybe I'll have that on me toast for breakfast with some cheese. I don't know. It's definitely a lot quicker than just running it through a sieve, the two buckets, and I'm pretty sure you get more of the honey out of it. And so, anyway, being that this is our first attempt, I reckon it's not too bad. I think if you were going to be serious about it, though, you want to get the about 10 models up from this one. <laughs> I was wondering about an old sheep press. That'd be fun. You know, the old bale press. <laughs> Anyway, there was a lot bigger models. I think this is the Junior Burger model and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger the further you go. Of course, if you didn't have actually an extractor, this would be a good idea too, because you could just put the honey in there, cut it off your frames and just pop it in this thing and scrunch them up. It'd be one less thing you'd have to have. It really gets down to how many boxes of bees you've actually got. So, you know, horses for courses, isn't it? Or that's the saying, I think that's how it goes. I reckon it's definitely sped the project up, but it's still going to be here for a while yet. So all we've got to do now, by the look of it, is put it through our honey sieve and then we can pop it in some jars and pop it online and look out! Honey coming your way! <laughs> <laughs>